Thank you. I'll let him know. Go ahead and remove this tumor. She's not scared. A miracle. A chance at a better life. Y un día de repente. Nothing. No doctor. Crusade for adoption. Gosh, in 2007. Our daughter is Elizabeth. If you had the opportunity, what would you change about your body, your nose, lips, or eyes? Thanks to plastic surgery, the human body gets altered, restoring self-esteem. But while adults come to mind when we hear plastic surgery, some kids have plastic surgery to correct deformities due to birth disorders. And in this video, we will look at 15 kids who had extreme plastic surgery. Number 15, Gage Berger. For six years of Gage's life, he was called a name that didn't belong to him. Instead of Gage Berger, he was called Elf Ears because of the shape and position of his ears. Because of his protruded ears, he kept more to himself and oftentimes to his parents. He never wanted to go to school. He didn't want to make friends. He just wanted to be alone. Gage believed that being alone would make him less of a laughing stock. Most times, Gage would stand before the mirror, trying to pin back his ears, and whenever he got nervous or upset, he would grab those ears. Subconsciously, Gage started feeling that his ears were the cause of every problem he faced. Gage's disturbed parents began to research cosmetic ear pinning surgery to save their son from getting damaged by the bullying he faced from other kids, and fortunately, they found a way. Gage's parents discussed with him the procedure and the possible outcome, and also sought his consent. Gage was more than excited to go through with it, so his parents immediately contacted facial plastic surgeon Dr. Stephen Mobley, who runs the Mobley Foundation for Charitable Surgery in Salt Lake City, Utah. In general, plastic surgery is not recommended for anyone under the age of 18, but otoplasty, ear reshaping surgery, is more common in children. This foundation made things easy by providing free cosmetic surgeries for school-aged children who are being bullied and whose parents cannot afford the particular surgery their child wishes to have. After consultation, Mobley said he deemed Gage okay for surgery. The six-year-old went through the two-hour procedure under local anesthesia while getting support from his parents and his stuffed tiger named Tigey, who also got the surgery. Two days later, it was time for Gage to see his new ears. As the doctor unwrapped his ears, he took a moment and looked into the mirror. His smile said it all. He grinned from ear to ear to see his transformation. After he returned to school, he went back home to tell his parents he played so well and that he made a lot of new friends. Thanks to plastic surgery, Gage's ears no longer have to live in guilt. Number 14, Hui Kang. While a lot of people wear a mask to have a double face, Hui Kang was born two-faced. Born in China with a rare birth defect, Hui Kang's family has always been sad since his birth because this type of face is not what you see everywhere. Hui Kang was born with transverse facial cleft, a deformity that gives him the appearance of having two faces or a mask over his face. Since his birth, doctors at the number 163 military hospital in Changsha, capital of Hunan province in China, have worked tirelessly to repair his facial bones, but all to no avail. Hui Kang's mother, Yilian Shi, was devastated and confused as she never saw all of these coming. According to her, she went through three ultrasound scans and one Doppler ultrasound scan during her pregnancy in which no deformation had been detected. Transverse facial cleft is a rare congenital anomaly that seldom occurs alone and is frequently associated with deformities of the structure developing from the first and second branchial arches. It is a condition that happens in one in 60,000 live births. After a while of seeking help, the public donated to Hui Kang's family for several operations to repair Hui Kang's face. In 2010, Hui Kang underwent two successful operations, but his face would not become immediately normal until after 10 years. Even after 10 years, Hui Kang would need to hope to see if his facial bones would grow normally. However, after the first operation, Hui Kang's face looked better, and we can only hope that it keeps getting better. Number 13, Elise Chaddock. You may not notice anything out of place on Elise's face at first glance, but a closer look will make you see there's something different about her nose. While many people would have left their noses this way, Elise was not comfortable with it, and that's because her friends were not helping the situation. 
She was called different names including Shark, Toucan, Big Nose, and Hammerhead Shark, instead of Elise. It was really hard on her because she felt her nose was gradually changing her identity. She struggled to block it all out, but it really affected her self-esteem. At different times, Elise would bow her head in her room weeping. Her mother could not take it anymore, so she reached out to Dr. Michael Nickel of the Magic Mirror Foundation, and to their delight, he offered to perform cosmetic surgery for free. The surgery took just over two hours, and when it was over, Elise was thrilled to see her new nose. She was so excited to start school that she once dreaded. Now look at Elise's face, and all you see is confidence. Number 12. Simao Meko. We all have our favorite superheroes as a child, but nothing can be as amazing as being a superhero yourself. That's exactly what Simao felt after he had a life-changing surgery. And here's why. At this time, Simao was just a nine-year-old boy who was born with a rare facial cleft that affected both his vision and breathing. Simao's condition, called a Tessier rare craniofacial cleft, left the two sides of his face not aligned. He needed seven hours of surgery so that his eyes could finally look in the same direction and so his nose could be rebuilt from scratch. After the long hours of surgery, Samao came out with a new face and look. His face had to be loosened to move it back together again correctly, according to his plastic surgeon, Dr. James Bradley. No matter what Samao had to go through in that theater, he felt too happy to remember as he could finally feel as good as he looked when he saw himself in the mirror. He now wears only a happy face and couldn't be happier when the hospital arranges for him to meet his favorite superhero. But the truth is, Samao was actually the bravest superhero in that gathering. Don't you agree? Number 11. Libby Coleman. Libby is another brave kid that suffers from a medical condition that is known as Larson syndrome. This disorder hinders the development of the bones, and the victim shows symptoms which may include joint dislocations at birth. This may affect the hips, elbows, knees, and flexible joints. They also have a distinctive appearance on the face, hands, fingers, and feet with square-shaped fingertips. Usually, x-ray shows small extra bones in the wrists and ankles of those suffering from this disorder. Some also have short stature, hearing loss, and abnormal curvature of the spine that may result in weakness of the arms or legs, and in some cases, both. Larson syndrome is a genetic disorder inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. In Libby's case, her knee and elbows were dislocated. It was so painful to watch a child go through so much pain caused by this disorder, but fortunately, this disorder can be treated. The treatment varies according to the symptoms of the individual. For joint defects, orthopedic surgery can be used to correct them, and for facial abnormalities, plastic surgery will do a good job of treating them. After Libby's parents moved to the U.S., they took Libby to a hospital where she had surgery and got her perfect healing. I bet you can never find a happier girl. Number 10. Connie Lloyd. You must think a clown's nose is something made out of a wild imagination. Wait till you see what this rare condition does to people. Meet Connie Lloyd, the girl born with a clown nose. This little girl was born with a benign tumor that grew to cover her nose. Connie suffered cruel taunts, and people called her different names because of her red-colored nose. To worsen the case, her parents were told that her condition could not be cured. In Connie's case, the scan revealed a shadow on her nose when she was 26 weeks in the uterus. But after she was born, there was nothing on her nose which was a great relief to her parents. Unknown to them, the relief would only last 24 hours as they began to notice a red mark on her nose. While they were wondering what the mark could be, the mark started to grow and by one month, it had grown to one and a half inches in diameter. The nose was not only growing externally but also internally, and soon Connie was diagnosed with hemangioma, a benign tumor. They tried the drug propranolol, which is used for heart conditions on Connie to stop the growth from becoming larger, but it didn't stop. Her parents' hopes were shattered after they were told that the condition had no cure and that Connie could bleed to death if she scratched or bruised the nose. But her mother would not give up. She kept searching for solutions, which she eventually found when she met a surgeon who specializes in treating facial disfigurements. The surgeon performed surgery on her nose and gave the girl a reason to smile again. 
He was able to remove the tumor, leaving her with just a small scar. Who cares about the scar when Connie can make a lot of friends and doesn't have to live her life worrying about what others have to say about her? Number 9. Sloane. Do you know what a miracle looks like? It looks exactly like baby Sloane, a girl born with a massive disfiguring tumor covering the left side of her face. Sloane was diagnosed with a hemangioma when she was born. The sheer size of the non-cancerous tumor was already affecting Sloane's facial nerves and muscles as she grew. It was more than obvious she needed help. Sloane's parents have been really sad about their daughter's condition since she was born with this condition, but they never for once gave up on finding her the help that she needed. Sloane had bravely been undergoing surgeries since she was 10 months old, and by the time she was two years old, she underwent her ninth and 10th operations. The final operation done in New York City was to eliminate the scar on Sloane's face. The operation was performed by Dr. Milton Weiner of the Vascular Birthmark Institute of New York, who specializes in hemangioma and malformations. Before the whole procedure started at 10 months old, Dr. Warner had mapped out the position of Sloane's facial nerves and muscles to avoid damaging them before the surgery. Talk about extreme surgery, Sloane went through it all. And for a baby like her, she handled it all amazingly. These surgeries became easier to go through because Sloane's family met with ESPN anchor Hannah Storm during a trip to New York following an operation when Sloane was 14 months old. Storm has set up a foundation that is giving financial support to families like Sloane's, and so they had the financial support they needed with a plastic surgeon who took his time to seek perfection on Sloane's face. Number 8. John Chris Carl Curante Normally only sharks have up to 300 teeth and no one in their right frame of mind would picture a human with such, but some conditions like hyperdontia can be cruel. This nine-year-old, John Chris Carl Curante of Barangay Luc, Dumanjug, Un, has hyperdontia, a rare condition of having supernumerary teeth. To elaborate, hyperdontia is the condition of having teeth that appear in addition to the regular number of teeth. They can appear in any area of the dental arch and can affect any dental organ. John Chris needed a lot of surgeries to remove his extra teeth. Usually, extractions are done for decayed teeth. But in his case, with so many excesses of dentition, relief is needed for better occlusion for the patient. Sometimes a hard-to-pull tooth must be removed in pieces. That's an extreme one. But despite his condition, John Chris managed to go to school and also managed to excel in class. Despite what he's going through, John Chris leads a normal life and has a dream of becoming a civil engineer someday. With the numerous surgeries he has gone through, he still needed more than five surgeries to remove every extra tooth in his mouth. Number 7. Fatima This is one happy kid who smiles easily and is always ready to laugh. But one thing that tries to take away her smokes is her rare condition of craniofacial anomalies, including a nasal encephalocele, a birth defect that causes a groove in the middle of the skull from the forehead to the nose. These are rare conditions that occur in about 1 in 5,000 live births. Along with her nose, Fatima's forehead and cheek didn't form correctly on the right side, and her right eye is only sensitive to light. Not much is known about her childhood as Fatima's family left her native Syria a long time ago when pro-democracy protests challenged President Bashar al-Assad, leading to a devastating civil war. When the family got to America, they sought more help for Fatima, even though they had been trying to make her face look normal for years. Her last surgery before they got to America left her with a plastic tube sticking out of her nasal passage. She had three surgeries before leaving Syria, the first at eight months old, two in Lebanon, and one during the five years she lived in Turkey. When the family got to America, they connected with a local general surgeon who knew Maureen Mo Doyle, R.I.N., a nurse at Johns Hopkins All Children's. Doyle works often with Ruiz, who specializes in facial reconstruction, and she recommended that he could help Fatima. Ruiz agreed to help her for different reasons. One being that he had a condition that made him go through plastic surgery himself. Ruiz first performed a procedure on Fatima on December 2017, using bone grafts from her skull to rebuild the right side of her forehead and cheek. He rotated a flap of skin to fit her reshaped face. Again in June 2018, 
Ruas inserted a tissue expander in her forehead. Each week, Fatima visits the office to have saline injected to stretch the skin. Eventually, there will be enough to combine with rib cartilage to form a nose. After the last surgery, Fatima was told to return to the hospital for some minor touch-ups, but much of the facial reconstruction will be complete. After everything, she could move on with a new nose, a new face, and a new life. Number 6. Logan Hanna. This is another child whose ears stuck out and bothered him. Logan was just a 12-year-old kid who was bullied at school for his protruded ears. He was called names like Elephant Ears, which made him sad all the time. He tried everything including growing his hair longer just to conceal his ears, but it got to a point. It was eating him up inside. Logan's parents connected with Dr. Steve Brid, a Dallas plastic surgeon who specializes in autoplasty. The procedure lasted two hours, one hour on each ear, to pin his ears back. Just a week after the surgery, the bandages were removed, and it was time to see what the new ears looked like. Logan noticed there was much difference in his ears, and he could not hide his joy. He saw himself and was able to say, I look good, words he hadn't been able to say to himself in 12 years. No doubt this boy will forever be grateful for plastic surgery. Number 5. Murphy When little Murphy was born, everything was normal except his lower lip, which appeared unusually swollen, and his chin was slightly discolored, but his parents didn't see it as anything serious at first. But as time went on, Murphy's lips became bigger and bigger. That was when his parents became more concerned. Eventually, Murphy was diagnosed with a venous malformation, a non-cancerous cluster of improperly formed blood vessels that caused his lip to balloon dangerously large. Whenever they took Murphy out in public, people would stop and stare. A lot of people thought that Murphy had fallen, causing him to have a swollen lip. Doctors tried to treat him with injections, typically given to address varicose veins, and while the swelling was reduced, Murphy's lip remained nowhere near the size it should have been. His only option was surgery. The family traveled to New York City, where they met with renowned surgeon Dr. Milton Weiner, who reassured the family. Amazingly, after hours of surgery, the malformation was removed from Murphy's lip. The little boy would grow without having to worry about anything not right on his face. Number 4. Artyom Aristakesian Most people were born with birthmarks, but it sometimes takes a very close look to see it on other people. But that's not the case with Artyom Aristakesian. He was born with his body covered in 80% birthmarks. It was more like Artyom was hopeless as the hospital that delivered him advised his parents to give him up. It was a lot to deal with as Artyom is at risk of having skin cancer. But his parents were firm with their decisions. They wanted to go home with the baby boy. Baby Artyom has nevus birthmarks, which are like oval patches of raised, dark-colored skin. According to the baby's parents, they only learned about Artyom's condition when he was born, and they were also warned that there is no assurance as to how long the baby would live. According to reports, although nevus birthmarks can be removed, baby Artyom's condition is rare since he was born with 80% birthmarks. The young boy even has nevus birthmarks on his brain, which cause occasional seizures. Aside from the nevus birthmarks, doctors also discovered that the baby also had spina bifida. For this, Artyom had to undergo a 90-minute surgery and it took five days of recovery before his parents could properly see him again. After the surgery, Artyom was taken home to meet his siblings. And at first, the kids asked why he had chocolate dabbed on his face. But as soon as they learned about his condition, they started to be very protective of him. Number 3. Ali Trezzi says, You must think Pinocchio is not real until you meet this young boy named Ali Trezzi says. In the close-knit town of Maesteg, Wales, a young boy Ali Trezzi stands out due to his remarkable resemblance to the beloved Disney character, Pinocchio. Ali's condition, known as a rare cranial disorder, caused his brain to grow through a crack in his skull, resulting in a distinctively protruding nose. Although Ollie's appearance may have drawn attention and led to him being labeled as Pinocchio Boy, his story encompasses far more than his unique physical traits. At first, when Ollie was given to his mother, she was speechless at the sight of a tiny bit with a golf ball-sized lump on his nose. 
But despite the shock, she embraced her son, understanding that this appearance didn't define his worth or her love for him. Since then, she has demonstrated great strength and resilience throughout Ollie's incredible journey. As Ollie grew older, he faced various challenges associated with his condition. However, his family, guided by a deep reservoir of love and resilience, chose to celebrate his individuality rather than succumbing to societal pressure or negative comments. They recognized that Ollie's unique appearance did not diminish his worth or potential. Instead, they encouraged him to embrace his individuality, fostering an environment where he could grow and thrive with confidence. When they sought medical assistance, they were told that Ollie needed surgery that would open up his nasal passage and enable him to breathe properly. Ollie's mother was really scared as he was too young at the time, but as soon as the doctors explained that he was at risk of contracting an infection or even meningitis if he tripped and knocked his nose, she gave her consent to the surgery. In November 2014, Ollie underwent a successful two-hour operation at Birmingham Children's Hospital. The surgery involved cutting open his skull to remove the excess sac of brain fluid and rebuild his nose. After the surgery, Ollie had a huge zigzag scar across his head, but his smile kept his mother going through it all. Fast forward to his full recovery, all you can see is a very happy boy who loves to play a lot. Number 2. Milagros Siren You must have heard about mermaids, but most likely you haven't seen one in real life. Meet Milagros Siren, nicknamed the Little Mermaid. Milagros was born with her legs fused together from her thighs to her ankles. No doubt Milagros needed surgery to correct this defect. At first, the doctors had planned to begin repairing the birth defect only up to her knees, but after a procedure exceeded their expectations, they separated the entire length of the legs. After the operation, there was more concern for the doctors. It was all about Milagros moving her new legs. Soon after the surgery, she moved one of her legs, but the two legs still had to be kept bound together for five to ten days so that she wouldn't do any harm to them while they healed. After that, they began to flex her knees and hoped that within two years the little girl would walk. They also needed to perform one more surgery to fully reconstruct her hip area to allow her to walk. This condition had affected a big part of her system, including reproductive, digestive, and other internal organs. According to experts, Milagros would need about 15 years of corrective surgery to repair them. As if that was not enough, Milagros has other problems, and the major one is a deformed left kidney and a very small right one located very low in her body. While the doctors told Milagros' parents that she may not live long as the rare condition she had kills newborns within hours of birth, she lived for 15 years, and sadly, she died while she was waiting for a kidney transplant. Number 1. Didier Montalvo Didier was dubbed Turtle Boy and made fun of because of a huge mole on his back that gave him the appearance of having a shell on his back. He was suffering from a rare condition called congenital melanocytic nevus. CMN. It is said that the rare birthmark affects about 1 in 20,000 babies born, but a top surgeon described Didier's case as the worst he'd ever seen. The little boy suffered greatly from the huge growth, which had stretched to cover more than half of his body's circumference. Not only did it affect his confidence, it also made daily life difficult, as it was painfully itchy. Adding to his difficulties were the villagers in his hometown who were not helping his situation. Didier and his mother had to live apart from their neighbors because they feared the boy was touched by evil forces. To make things worse, they accused his mother of having looked at a solar eclipse while pregnant, thus causing the boy's condition. As a result, Didier has not been able to be baptized or attend school. And the craziest part is the mole kept growing bigger every day. Specialists who looked at his case feared the mole would soon turn malignant or affect his brain. Didier's mother was too poor to even attempt surgery, despite knowing that the condition could affect his brain. She lost hope until his story was published in a local newspaper. The report brought in a good amount of donations, allowing a Colombian medical team to be assembled in an attempt to carry out a risky operation that would not only save the boy's life, but rid the family of social exclusion. Thanks to leading plastic surgeon Neil Bulstrode and his team of specialists, Didier was given a chance to lead a normal life. At first, the surgeon was shocked, 
as three quarters of the circumference of Didier's body was effectively affected. The team of doctors had to carry out a complicated series of skin grafts over several stages even before beginning to operate on him. What made the operation difficult was the size and protruding shape of the mole. But the good thing is the mole was successfully removed and Didier is now able to live the normal and happy life that he deserves. Let's take a moment to appreciate plastic surgery. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.